Hello, welcome to MySecurity TV and our Tech and Seek Weekly. My name is Chris Coverage. I'm the editor with My Security Media. Today, we're joined by Yuri Milowski. He's the CEO with SharePass coming in from Queensland. And we're going to be talking about JISEC uh, up in Dubai in April. We'll both be there and we're media partners uh, with JISEC 2024 being held at the Dubai World Trade Center. Yuri, thanks very much, very much for joining us. You're a startup uh, in the cybersecurity space. Uh, sounds like a good good story. Yeah, it is. Uh, thanks, Chris, for, thanks for letting me join. Um, so uh, I'm the CEO of SharePass. And uh, just to quickly explain what SharePass, so we are a cybersecurity startup. We've been running since 2021. And our goal is to secure information sharing. So there is a challenge today where uh, when people want to share something confidential, and confidential doesn't necessarily have to be passwords. It could be PII, it could be credit card information, it could be really anything which is considered confidential information, addresses, phones. Um, and our uh, goal is to secure that information because right now, the way it's being shared is through traditional uh, communication channels. And that goes to be SMS, uh, chat, email, and any type of other media. Now, the problem with that is it leaves a digital footprint, which means if I share something confidential with you, it remains on my mobile, and then it also remains on your device. And that information can later be picked up if, you, if your device got compromised, and essentially you then risk your identity, and there is an opening there for uh, breaches, and it can cause really big trouble. Um, the fact today is that most breaches are still as a result of mishandling confidential information and uh, credentials. Um, so our goal is to protect that by providing an easy solution to share data on top of existing channels. So without wanting to oversimplify it, uh, it's a file sharing platform? It's not a file sharing. It does share files as well. It's one of the functions. But it's yeah. a predominantly a platform uh, to share uh, confidential data. So, for example, I can write to you an SMS and write an SMS, Hey, Chris, here is your password. And then I can mark the password and encrypt it so it converts it to an encrypted vault. So then when you open it on your side, I can apply certain restrictions, but once you opened it, that data is being destroyed. So if your phone later on gets, com gets compromised, this data is no longer there. So essentially we're cleaning up the digital footprint. I saw that you're integrated with some single sign-ons, uh, even YubiKey. Yes. H how does it actually work? Is it the is it 286 key bit? Uh, yeah. Encryption. Yeah. So the encryption we're using is 256 uh, AES, 256 which is, pattern, yeah. yeah, currently the strongest uh, encryption uh, that is like in production. Um, and uh, our integration with YubiKey is basically created out of a need to apply some form of a second factor. So when I share with you confidential data, um, in certain cases, I will send it to the link, the, the, you know, the encrypted link via email, and that would be fine. But in certain cases where the data is even more kind of confidential and I want to guarantee the identity of the user, I can also enroll and apply your YubiKey. So essentially when you get the link, you need to touch on with your link on the phone because it's NFC supported and only then you will be able to open the encrypted link. So it provides like an extra layer of security. Uh, and the plan is obviously to develop further into biometrics and uh, other forms of authentication. Right. What, what are you finding as a startup uh... Who, who are your main clients at the moment? Who's your target market and your client profiles? So our target market, we already have an, a few uh, enterprise accounts uh, with uh, healthcare being probably the most the most dominant one for us. And we're aiming to get into the space and uh, defense and maybe even government industries. And what's the sign-on? What's the configuration process? I noticed that you have like a consumer level and then you move up into a uh, sort of SME and then enterprise level. What's maybe the difference between the two from a consumer perspective? Uh, easy, it's an application, is it? Just an app? Yeah. So what we have is at the moment, we have only two uh, subscriptions. Uh, one is we call it the consumer and the consumer is completely free. So any user can go and create his own account. Only like there are a number of limitations. Uh, one of the limitations is basically it will allow you only to do it with your personal email. So any organizational email will not work because it's free. It's just we created it because... It's kind of like our goal to provide better security for everyone. And if people can utilize it and use it, it's great marketing for us and it, it will benefit them. So it's a win-win. Um, our second option is uh, the enterprise platform. And that one um, is basically the way it works is on dedicated instances. So that means we will create a dedicated instance for you, 
let's say your company X, we created a dedicated instance for company X in whatever it's located. So let's say it's United States and they will have their local instance of SharePass. So they will not share the database with anyone else. Um, so we can customize it. We can create custom integrations. We can create custom functions, custom forms, and really connect with the internal procedures to make sure that the data they are sharing internally or externally uh, is as confidential, as secure as possible. How much configuration or control does the client need to do? Or because it sounds like you, you might be doing it on the platform itself, or is it they have control over how they configure it and, and who they share it with? So there is a traditional template that we, you know, enrolled uh, automatically for clients uh, unless there is specific needs. So, for example, on consumer, it's the same for all uh, where they can log in. They can create their own templates if they want. They can adjust their own settings, um, but it's pretty much standard for them. Uh, for enterprise, we do collect certain information because we can create a white labeling. So it will sit on a specific domain. It will send uh, the links in a specific way. Uh, so it's much more customizable. So the way the onboarding works is uh, the communication will start. We will uh, send uh, the client some sort of a guide of what sort of information we need. We need to receive that information. And then we basically provide further instructions into when are we going to deploy it, how it's going to work, and some basically some timeline. Does I take it the information doesn't come through you? Is this a sort of an encryption key sharing platform? Is that how how you would drill it down and go, that's what we do. We share the encryption keys and then the clients uh, sort of decrypt themselves at, a, at either end. So we, in terms of encryption, we use um, two methods and it really depends how you're going to work with SharePass because in SharePass, you have two options. One, you can send information encrypted and you can also request information encrypted. Now, when you send, you use a symmetric encryption. Uh, we never own the keys. Uh, so the keys are generated and created on the end user device which means we don't have access to that data. Even if we want to, we don't have access to that data. The key is always with the client. Uh, then we have also asymmetric when we request. So for example, let's say you're a client and I need to receive some confidential information from you. Now, instead of explaining you how to use SharePass and how to do this and that, I can just tell you, hey, here is a link. It will be empty. Just load whatever information that you need to provide me, press OK, and it comes back encrypted to me. That one uses asymmetric and it's the regular PKI infrastructure. Nice. Now, from a startup, when did you, how long have you been going and uh, what's your plan? I do see you've got a bit of a roadmap on your website too. Yeah. So we've started in 2021, uh, which basically three years ago. And uh, the need was born out of, um, you know, out of how do we share confidential data with clients? I run another company called YM Tech, which we provide MSP services. And we always had the, an issue of how do we share confidential data with clients? which are not willing to use password managers, for example. Not everybody uses it. Um, majority of our clients, they don't, and they don't want to. Um, so how do we do that? Okay, email, SMS, chat. We were always uncertain about those ways because it's just not secure enough. And the problem is that it leaves a trail called the digital footprint. And uh, for ourselves, we wanted to eliminate uh, that problem and solve it. And that's how SharePass was born. Um, and then we just looked at that. We looked at the minimal viable product that we already had. And we're like, OK, if we're using that, uh, we're pretty sure other, others need it too. And we started focusing on uh, building the platform. We initially decided to focus on MSPs. But we actually saw much uh, higher traction from enterprises, which is why we created the enterprise platform earlier than the MSP. So we are looking to release the MSP subscription. Uh, by hopefully mid to end of 2024. Um, but like you said, we have a long roadmap, so I hope we can squeeze it in. Well, I was going to say, it definitely looks like 2024 is the year for you. Uh, most of that was in sort of Q1 to Q2 uh, for this particular year. So it does sound exciting. And maybe that does bring us to uh, to, to, to Gaisec for in Dubai in April. As I mentioned, we're media partners for, and this, is, this interview is part of uh, Gaisec just in the lead up to that it's looking a pretty big event uh yuri and i were just talking off camera in terms of the middle east generally and the gulf region in terms of the size of this particular market um yuri maybe what brought you to to the gulf information security expo and conference uh and how you see the middle east and, and gulf region uh as a potential market for you yeah so when we started working on sherpas and slowly started expanding we started receiving some interest uh, globally 
and we knew that you know being a SaaS company we knew that we will basically the market will be global it's not only australia so the focus is always naturally you know uh, um australia and then us uh, and we established an entity in us as well but then we started to look at okay let's let's for a second look at the markets and we are really looking for innovative markets that are looking to um invest in cybersecurity and develop cybersecurity i think it's uh probably one of the most important industries these days uh, because everything runs whether you feel like it or not on computers and technology and must be secure um, and uh, we found a number of markets that we became very interested in one of them is uh, singapore and the other one was uh, the gulf region uh, so dubai and the gulf countries um, and as we started thinking about it uh, that was an interesting coincidence i received an email from uh, uh, someone who works uh, for uh, dubai world trade center inviting me to a conference called JISEC. And now I've never heard of JISEC before, uh, but I was very willing to explore because it was definitely on the roadmap. Um, we had a conversation and the offer was great, uh, very attractive. So I said, well, why not? Uh, I'll also get to visit Dubai. I've never been there before. Um, and uh, we, started, we started working with them. The connection kind of was very natural, very good. Um, and I started also to explore, okay, so I'm going there to present my solution. I'm pretty sure there are more entities in Australia and more companies in Australia who want to, you know, put some footprint in uh, the Middle East. So I basically created a partnership with the Dubai World Trade Center and uh, I'm now representing Australia. Well done. And Yuri, so basically for the audience, a call to action is if they're interested in getting involved or reaching into the Gulf region, they can make contact with you direct. Uh, and uh, and sort of get your background into what your dealings are with them, and then they can you can point point them in the right direction. And likewise for our audience, uh, I think we'll have the link in the show notes. But uh, we'll be reporting more from uh, the I'm calling it JISEC or GISEC. I think it's one of those one of those uh, acronyms. But it's the Gulf Information Security Expo and Conference. Uh, it looks a pretty big deal. Uh, like I said, we've been doing a n- number of interviews. Uh, on the scene in Dubai at the World Trade Center uh, in April. So stay tuned for more. We'll have the details in the show notes. But Yuri, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, the the call to action really is uh, to go to jisec.ai uh, and check out uh, the Gulf Information Security Expo and Conference. And also, it's always a pleasure to speak to an Australian uh, cybersecurity startup. So Yuri, uh, without this particular event, we uh, I check my I check my desk. And I haven't been receiving any updates from SharePass, so please put us on on your list. Uh, and uh, and all the best as an Australian cybersecurity startup. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here.